record. Okay, I'm going to record this to the cloud. Starting now. Do you want me to? Do you want me to introduce this adventure, or do you want to? It's all yours. Is what okay. Here we go. Chris, can I start? Okay. Good evening, everyone. This is Kim Fontana. I'm the proud superintendent of schools in Pauling. And this is our annual reception to recognize our top 10 students from the class of 2020, our tenure recipients this year, and our very special retirees. So like so many things where we've adjusted, uh, this is our uh, opportunity to share our congratulations with these special people tonight. And I'd like to let you know that this presentation uh, will be available on the Board of Ed webpage, uh, both as a PDF presentation and also as a live recording uh, for your enjoyment later or for anyone who isn't with us tonight. So our top 10 students from the class of 2020, in a special uh, movie that was put together with our creative teachers at the high school, particularly Jillian Ronaldo, which I'm, I'm gonna share with you. The movie features the really extraordinary professional photography that the high school benefited from this year. Uh, the thanks is owed to Lori Spence and Jane Haslam, who accompanied the high school caravan delivering congratulations to over 90 high school students um, about 10 days ago, over three, over three days. During the caravan of congratulations that um, Mrs. Spence and Mrs. Haslam photographed, we delivered the uh, certificates to the top 10 students, letting them know um, who they are. So in this movie, you're going to see those students. You'll also uh, see uh, them receive their uh, certificate from Mrs. Callan or, or me. Uh, in some cases, you'll see a picture with their family and you'll also uh, get to see their future college plans. So I hope you enjoy.
So I want to congratulate the amazing students. They've worked incredibly hard and um, we congratulate them so sincerely. They're really 10 extraordinary young men and women. And uh, we're so grateful to have had the opportunity to share this part of their lives with them. And we look so forward to what they will do uh, in their futures. So congratulations to the top 10 from the class of 2020. We also congratulate our tenure recipients at this reception. And this year, we took time in the actual board meetings where the uh, board granted tenure to uh, compliment them and say a little bit about what they've achieved in the district. It's tonight, but we have started a new tradition this year of honoring them by asking them to choose a favorite book that would belong somewhere in our K-12 media collection. And that favorite book will have a special nameplate recognizing them on the occasion of their tenure. So as we go through each of the tenure recipients, you'll also see the book that they chose. So first is Mabel Boutros tenured in the area of English to speakers of other languages. Mabel is a passionate advocate, advocate for multilingual learners, energetic teacher that we're so fortunate to have in our elementary school. And Mabel contributed the alchemist to, to our collection. Lisa Cassell Seaman is our one of our two high school counselors. She earned tenure in the area of school counseling. And Lisa is just one of those people in the school district who is so responsive to students and families. She goes beyond for every single person every day. And uh, she's so in tune to students, not just their needs, but their strengths and who they are. And I know the students will very much enjoy having another Stephen King in our high school collection. Katie Coffey earned tenure in the area of elementary education. She currently teaches second grade. And she distinguished herself very early in her career as an instructional leader among her colleagues and in the building. Katie also distinguished herself by pursuing ESL certification. And um, every library could use more Harry Potter books. Hannah Geiling was tenured in the area of music, currently serving as the leader of our entire 5 through 12 vocal music program, which I think everyone would say she has transformed into a program of which we are all tremendously proud and um, Hannah contributed the idea for a book on the American Songbook. Joanna Linarella earned tenure in the area of school psychologist. And Joanna is the anchor of our mental health team in the elementary school. She's a trusted colleague. She is someone that uh, teachers, administrators, parents, and students all seek advice from and she is both caring and wise. And she also has a light heart, which may explain her choice of text. Claire Magnesio was tenured in the area of library media. She is currently our middle school and high school library media specialist. Claire has brought her passion for research, media, and innovation. Uh, she's helped uh, redesign our library spaces and our library programs. And her favorite book, she always has a new one, and this one is Becoming Dr. Q. Erin Plotty earned tenure in the area of world language, and currently teaches Spanish in the high school. She distinguished herself in, in many ways, one of which was in achieving ESL certification this year. Erin's also led um, our world language uh, department by serving as a curriculum leader. 
She was instrumental in helping us develop the seal of biliteracy, really leading that work. And she has also led uh, the district into participating in a regional assessment effort, uh, raising standards for our world language proficiency. And she's, uh, she chose in the time of the butterflies. So congratulations to all of our tenure recipients this year. Retirees. So we have 14 people We have 14 people who are leaving our district this year. Uh, some have actually, uh, they've already concluded their service and some will be working uh, right through October, uh, but we generally honor them in June. Together, these 14 people have served the school district for a collective 274 years of education and experience and um, a different person will be able to share a little bit about each one of these very special folks. So we're gonna start with Lisa Anderson and I think Dr. Kirkus will be able to uh, share a few words. I have the honor of recognizing Lisa Anderson as she retires from the Pauling Central School District after 33 years of service. Lisa is an icon in Pauling. Not only has she been a lifelong resident in our school district, but she is also a Pauling High School graduate herself. Lisa was the head custodian at Pauling Elementary School when I joined as the principal there over seven years ago. I truly enjoyed working with her and what set Lisa apart was her care and commitment to our school building and our school grounds. Lisa is very knowledgeable about the community and the history of our building and she's very proud of Pauling. Throughout the years, Lisa was always ready with a suggestion or idea when we ran various functions and events at the elementary school. And she was always willing to work with me and try some of my new and sometimes crazy ideas, such as holding a Hawaiian luau luncheon for our kids. Lisa has a true love for the kids at the elementary school. You can always find her at the, at the main entrance greeting students as they entered the building. And when students acted a bit rambunctious or acted in ways that did not respect our school building and grounds, rather than get angry, Lisa talked to the children about what they did and how they could resolve and remedy the situation. She used these situations as learning experiences for the children in our school and I really appreciated that. I wanna congratulate Lisa on her retirement and let her know that she will be missed by the staff, students and community because of her dedication not only to our school and our grounds, but also to the children we serve. Thank you, Dr. Kirkus. Nancy Charlebacus is another retiree, and Mr. Rice is going to share a few words about Nancy. Yes, good evening. It's my pleasure to uh, to speak about Nancy uh, in this ceremony. That will honor her as a retiree of the district. Nancy served more than sixteen years with the Pauling Central School District, eventuating as a senior typist in the Office of Pupil Personnel Services. Uh, previously, she had served as a, a substitute teacher, uh, substitute monitor, and substitute uh, clerical staff for the district. Uh, Nancy had uh, a calming demeanor for many parents who would call and had a number of questions about the services and um, mailings and IEPs and uh, consents that were coming out of our office. Uh, she also had uh, a critical role in kind of training myself and uh, Laura, her her, um, her teammate and the clerical staff of the PPS office uh, as we both came to Pauling nearly the same time. And she had a lot of experience that helped us to really turn the page and, and, and hit the ground running. So I appreciate Nancy for her hard work and dedication to the district. I want to congratulate her on her retirement, and I want to uh, make every best wish uh, to come for her and her future uh, as she is a Pauling resident and uh, plans to maintain residence in Pauling. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Randy Ferris is, is another retiree, 
And Mr. Green is going to share a few words about Randy. Well, I've only had to uh, gotten to know Randy uh, for a very short time. But uh, in that time, I can say uh, Randy really became a friend. And I, I do look forward to uh, having conversations with him outside of work uh, after he retires. Um, in, the, in the brief time that I was with Randy, it's just amazing to see the care that he took into uh, the grounds. Um, we were just getting ready to line fields before the COVID uh, started. And um, how he did it and how he explained to, explained to me his system and how accurate everything had to be, including the tiger paws. I did not know we painted tiger paws on our fields, but I guess we do. Um, he did such an amazing job and took such great care of that. Uh, he has a little bit of uh, senioritis and the fact like a high school senior, he was very excited to get out, but now he's thinking, oh, if I only had one more year in falling. He uh, just loved the school so much, but he is looking forward to retirement. He is uh, active. He is the pastor of his church. He is active his, in his uh, community. And he is generally and all around just a really, really nice guy. Um, I will share just one funny story as I was talking through, uh, you know, with all the maintenance staff about Randy. And there was a time when he was working on the playground and he was digging a post hole. And he said, you know, he was telling the other guys, you know, it's okay. We don't need to put tape around this. Nobody can fall into this hole. They put tape around the hole anyway, just because this is what you have to do when you're digging a hole or leaving it unattended. Even with the tape around it, the next day, Randy fell into that hole that he swore nobody would fall into. The, but um, I, I, will, uh, I will miss Randy. And he is just another example of a tremendous, dedicated employee. He, he knows every blade of grass at, at the uh, elementary school, I have no doubt. He has referred to branches by numbers to me, and I'm like, Randy, I don't, don't, know, what you're, I don't know what number branch that is. Um, he, is uh, he really takes pride in his work, and we will miss him. Thank you, Mr. Green. Ron Hollywood is also leaving us, and Ms. Gleason is going to share a few words about Ron. Hi, good evening, everyone. So Ron has served the Pauling Central School District for 21 years and 10 months. He served as the middle school custodian, custodial worker, and cleaner. Um, Ron has been regarded as someone who is always willing to help. He is dedicated to our school and our students um, and his friendliness, reliability, and sincere care for the people he worked with. Um, and I think, you know, one of the most memorable things about Ron um, or many of the most mem memorable things about Ron were the small things that he did um, that really showed that dedication and that, um, that care. So for example, every single late night that I was in this building, Michelle was in this building, a teacher, a staff member was in this building, Ron always escorted us out to our car to make sure that we had a safe walk and we would joke about possibly running into a bear by the dumpster. Um, but he, he never ceased to do that. And I think that little example really summarizes Ron's contributions to our district, that he really cared about the people he served um, and he took his work very seriously. Um, and Ron, you will really be missed at Pauling Middle School. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ms. Gleason. Mary Jacques is, is one of our honored retirees and Mr. Rice has a few words to share. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to speak uh, about Mary and this um, board meeting that celebrates her retirement after 20 plus years of service uh, to students with disabilities in, this, in the Pauling Central School District. Mary is an absolute primetime player when it comes to being a special education teacher. She is a person who has great relationships and great rapport with the students. And she knows how to support the students depending on the level of support that they need. Um, and, and that's no further from the present than what she's done this spring and getting us a couple of students working really hard to support a couple of students uh, to graduate and reach um, the, the, the bar in terms of what they needed to complete for graduation. Uh, Mary has been a very collaborative, very kind, uh, 
very knowledgeable person in the field, but also in someone who, who was able to quickly um, alert me as to what was happening in the polling school district and how I could, um, you know, the things that were working well and things that weren't, weren't working so well. In addition, um, I know for a fact that this last year, you, you know, you talk about um, folks going above and beyond in their last year of service. I know that firsthand from Mary, I would often receive texts after nine o'clock at night and before seven in the morning of her support for the students she worked with. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Mary and thank her for her years of dedication and service to the students of Pauling Central School District. You certainly will be missed. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mary's husband, Peter, is also retiring. Folks who know Mary and Peter know that in addition to a wonderful relationship, they also have a wonderful competition between the two of them. And Peter has uh, outdistanced Mary even in this way, in so far as his long service. And um, Ms. Gleason is gonna share a few words to congratulate Peter. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, so Pete, I'm going to speak directly to you because knowing you and how devoted and dedicated you are to our district, you're listening right now. So Pete, you have served our school district for 32 years. During that time, you've been a physical education teacher at the middle school, at the middle level, I should say. Um, and in addition to that, you have coached the following. You've been an assistant modified wrestling coach, boys varsity baseball coach, boys modified football coach, boys modified basketball coach, girls varsity softball, and girls varsity basketball. So simply from that list and the number of, years of, number of years of service, it's difficult to imagine the amount of lives you have influenced and inspired. You have shown tremendous loyalty to Pauling. You have seen our district evolve, and it's remarkable to think about how difficult it must be to flexibly adapt and grow um, with an organization for so many years. You have done so with pure determination and grace, and you have done an incredible job growing a physical education program that has evolved with time. You also managed to maintain a smile and spirit while doing so. You have shown, um, sorry, you have contributed so much to our school-wide pride. You have been the organizer and champion of so many Pauling Central Middle School traditions, for example, field day, our staff volleyball game. You have shown high expectations of children and our entire community. This came through often, but a few noteworthy examples are your presence on the safety team, fitness testing for our students, and your contributions during professional development. Thank you, Pete, and cheers to you as you start the next chapter. Thank you, Ms. Gleason. Carol King is also retiring from the middle school and Mrs. Rivas has a few words to share about Carol. Good evening, everyone. I have the honor to talk about Carol. Carol served as a fine and practical arts teacher at the middle school and high school. What stands out most in my mind about Carol is her passion and love for teaching. She is a dedicated professional who was always thinking of creative ways to engage students from cooking and baking challenges to the Culinary Institute of America. Carol collaborated with the County Association of Family and Consumer Science Teachers and was honored by the group. Most recently, Carol incorporated a classroom library into her program with much enthusiasm. Carol was an active member of our school, Carol was an active member of our school community taking on multiple roles to support students. She was a seventh and eighth grade advisor student council advisor, yearbook advisor, and activity fund advisor. Thank you for your 15 years of service. You will truly be missed, Carol. Thank you, Mrs. Rivas. Terry Conchin is also going off to her retirement, and Mrs. Callan is going to share a few words of congratulations. Thank you. I have had the pleasure of working with Terry Conchin for the past 11 years. I knew her first at the middle school 
And then I believe she was transferred to the high school at just about the same time that I became principal. From the first day I met Terry Conchin to the very last day she was at Pauling High School, she maintained the same professionalism, enthusiasm for student learning, and pride in her work. She collaborated with teachers. She provided support and guidance. She worked tirelessly for her students. Her calm, reassuring manner inspired trust and confidence in parents and students alike. When we began the life skills program at the high school, our pride program, she was one of the founding members who spent countless hours collaborating and figuring out how we could best support those students who would need support moving on to their post-secondary world. She also, in being a speech and language pathologist at the high school, you have to be a jack of all trades. So you have to keep one step ahead of your students and their curriculum. Every night she would be reading the same text as her students. She would be going over the biology lesson. She would be trying to figure out the algebra two so that she would be able to support her students the next day. While I am thrilled that Terry is going to be heading out to a wonderful retirement, she is going to be sorely, sorely missed at the high school. Mrs. Callan is also going to share a few words about Sue McGowan. Sue McGowan has been at the high school probably longer than anybody else. If you think about some, I'm trying to think of a word. I, I think force of nature comes to mind. Sue worked at many jobs in the high school, but I will tell you what I appreciate most about her was her willingness to do any task that I personally asked her to do. Sue McGowan cared deeply, deeply for the students and for the school. And she took pride in her job and what she did to make the students and the school a better place. A couple of years ago, our valedictorian in their speech actually said, and we all laughed because it was true, that she was really the boss of the school. She was everywhere. She was always watching. She was the eyes and ears. And while I certainly wish her well in her retirement, uh, the place certainly is not going to be the same without her. Mrs. Callan's also going to share a few words about Louis Pasella. Three in a row. Every day, looking outside my office window, after the buses have left, like clockwork, Lou would park his car and walk into the high school. Every day, like clockwork, he would stop by the main office to say hello. We'd share a joke with the main office and he before he began his day. Lou started his career on Casanova Street. As a civilian employee of the New York City Sanitation Department. He then wound up at the Dover School District before, about 20 years ago, heading for the Pauling Central School District where he remained to today. I suppose you could say that he saved the best for last. You know, it's interesting because sometimes you think after hours, he was our head custodian after most of the kids had left. 
So he was there for all the sports and extracurricular. You might think the students wouldn't know him. That's absolutely positively not the truth. Just recently, a student said, oh, Lou, he's leaving because that student mentioned how every time they needed something, they would go and ask him and he was there to help him. He was pleasant, he was courteous, and no matter what you asked him to do, he always did it. He was always willing to lend a hand. Students knew him, appreciated his help. Teachers appreciated his help. And again, for some of us at the high school, while time does march on and we're happy for all our retirees who are going on, it's really not going to be the same without them. So I wish Lou all the best. Um, I know that he's already looking for his next job, uh, and uh, I wish him all the success in the world. Thank you, Mrs. Callan. Pat O'Neill is also leaving us, moving on to um, his future, and Mr. Green has a few words to share. The, um, that's a pretty good picture of Pat there, because Pat is always smiling. Um, he really, truly enjoyed everything that he did, and he loved taking care of these buildings. And it was no second-rate fixes for Pat. The quality of Pat's work was, was always top-notch and always the best for our buildings. There are moldings in our buildings that you would never know had been repl replaced or, or recreated that have been done by Pat. He has done amazing woodwork. He's an incredible carpenter. Um, if anybody has visited Kim's office, uh, you will see a beautiful set of bookshelves that was part of uh, Pat's COVID assignment while he uh, could get some work done at home. Um, he's an incredible craftsman and he has so much knowledge of our district. I feel like I am uh, losing uh, maintenance volume one for Pauling Central School buildings with uh, Pat leaving. So um, I have been spending a, a lot of time with him. I, I do have, look forward to the fortunate. I will be working with uh, Pat's son this summer, who uh, will be as one of our summer summer cleaners. But I, I do wish Pat the best. He's an incredible person, and I do look forward to continuing a relationship with him after he retires. He will be busy putting many miles on his motorcycle, I, I, I do imagine, while his uh, wife, who is not retired yet, is at home. So... I wish the best to Pat, but um, I will definitely uh, miss him. Thank you, Mr. Green. Hernan Rodriguez is also retiring, and Ms. Gleason is going to share a few words of congratulations for Hernan. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Fontana. So Hernan worked for the Pauling Central School District for over 11 years just shy of 12 years. Um, he worked as a custodial worker at both the high school and the middle school. Um, he has been regarded as someone who is so good at what he does. Teachers have spoken about how grateful they are for how, how hard he worked in their classrooms and how clean he kept their rooms. Um, he has also been regarded as a team player and that he's contributed so much to our building. Thank you, Ernan, for your years of service, and I wish you all the best. Happy retirement. Thank you, Ms. Gleason. Annie Rowe has also retired this year, and Mrs. Rivas is gonna share a few words uh, in celebration of Annie. Annie began working in Pauling in 1903 as a food service helper. She quickly moved on to senior food service helper and cook manager. Ultimately, she transitioned into a custodial position. When I met Annie eight years ago, my first impression was that of a warm, welcoming, knowledgeable person who was always willing to do anything to help out. You would often see Annie during her lunch helping sell tickets for the school dances or assisting with school ce celebrations. She was always thinking of the students and making suggestions for school improvements on their behalf. Annie received several acknowledgements over the years for extraordinary service. She was named the unsung hero for Paula Middle School 2004-2005 school year. She was recognized for her efforts during the blizzard of 2003 and commended on field preparation for the 2003-2004 school year. Yes, Annie worked all the roles mentioned above, but she was and will always be remembered as a vital member 
of our Paulin Middle School family. We miss you very much, Annie, and congratulations and best wishes on your retirement. Thank you, Mrs. Rivas. So I have the pleasure of speaking about Lisa Sensenig, who has been our Assistant Superintendent for Finance for the past seven years, and my colleague. Um, I uh, have worked with a lot of business officials in my career, and uh, no relationship have I valued or enjoyed as much as working with Nisa. And there are very clear and obvious reasons for that. Uh, first, I wanna to speak to her accomplishments. There, they are so many, and they are across such broad categories that I'm only going to be able to mention the most important. Uh, within the administration, NISA has been a key decision maker in all facets of school operations. She, uh, she comes to school business uh, from a background as a teacher and her interest and commitment to instruction and the core mission of the school district is always present in her work. Um, she's been a, a key factor in all of our decisions from facilities to transportation, to food service, to technology and instruction. I think that the, the most important thing to understand about Nisa's leadership is that she both safeguards and stewards the district's finances and she also never forgets what those finances are for, namely the current and the future children of the school district. I can't say that about every school district, uh, school district business official I've worked with, but I can absolutely say it about Nisa. Across the district, she's had tremendous impact. She brought about the relocation of transportation and oversaw the completion of multiple capital projects, as well as the uh, multiple complex purchasing processes and RFPs, uh, uh, requests for proposals, a, um, a transparency and a sophistication and a professionalism that she has brought to every aspect of school purchasing um, and vendor attainment. Most recently, um, a major effort was in securing our new architect over this winter through uh, an exhaustive and rigorous process. Uh, she's delivered and overseen an inclusive budget development process um, that um, has seen seven successful budget votes as a result. And she's created tremendous transparency not only within the school district, but between the school district and the community and helped to foster trust between the board and the community also. Um, she approaches her work with an attitude of service for every single person that she interacts with. She approaches her work with our bargaining units that way. She approaches her work when a parent calls that way. She approaches her work with a colleague and she approaches her work that way with the community. She leaves behind a quality infrastructure to support our next business official. And from my perspective, that is the signature of a true and authentic leader. Thank you so much, Nisa. Congratulations. We also have two retiring Board of Education members. Carolyn Costella has been a board member for three years. And Inga Garbarino has served the board for six years, and she's a former vice president. And Dr. Asher wants to share a few words about our retiring board members. Thank you, Kim. On behalf of the board, I wanted to say how much we will miss both Inga and Carolyn. The school board quickly learns when they become members, as individuals, they're powerless. The power to improve our Pauline schools required the school board to act as one body along with the superintendent. 
and of course, with respectful disagreements along the way. By working together as one body, each with our own skills and expertise, we really make the magic happen to make Pauline schools better. Today, we must say goodbye and thanks to two unique parts of the school board body. Carolyn Costello is completing her first three-year term as a school board member, and Inga is completing her sixth. Each of these women have much in common. Both are educators and have children in the school district. They have left an indelible mark on the school district, but in different ways. In keeping with her research interests, Carolyn Costello has worked on policy on the policy committee to update and create board policies. As I have found out, policy issues are the critical underpinning for a school district, especially with the quick pace of change we are all seeing around us. Inga Garbarino has a unique vantage point being a teacher in the Bedford School District. She sees what works and does not at a teacher's level, and she gets lots of input from her husband, Guido, who is a teacher in Mamaroneck. Inga has contributed greatly as part of the curriculum committee, something she knows well in dealing daily with her Bedford students. Then there are the absolute critical tasks of the school board that we do together to make magic. And uh, you'll see Carolyn on the left uh, and Inga on the right in this photo with the rest of the uh, board members together. By far the most in recent task was hiring a new superintendent a year ago. The board's nationwide search ultimately focused down to Kim Fontana, who was then assistant superintendent for instruction. There were many full board meetings necessary before reaching our unanimous decision to hire Kim. I remember one memorable board meeting at Inga's house over dinner. And talk about a great hire. Kim's fine leadership is seen daily as she deals with the ever-changing new normal due to the pandemic. Inga and Carolyn, the school board wants to thank you for your fine service as school board members. We wish you well and hope in the future you might run again for the school board. The school, the Pauline schools will always need people of your integrity and expertise. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'd like to thank all of our speakers and everyone uh, listening and would encourage all of you to congratulate our retirees, our tenure recipients, and our top 10 students um, as you have the chance in person. Congratulations, everyone. We are happy for you. We miss you. We've learned from you. And we will never forget you. Thank you, Kim. <clears throat> Thank you all. It was excellent. I think we are about to convene our, um, reconvene out of, well, reconvene to open session. Right, Peggy? Okay. You're, let me unmute you. If you can, Peggy, you're, you're muted. Yes, Jeff, that's correct. We're on to re reconvening to open session. Excellent. Resolve that the Board of Education reconvene to open session. The time is now 717. Do I have a motion? I moved. Inga, thank you. Second, Karen. Karen, thank you, Karen. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? Okay, we're back in, uh, in open session. I'm going to mute everyone uh, while we um, do the salute to the flag, please. Hang on a second. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Okay, we're all unmuted and we're back in business. And I believe that it's uh, time for uh, comments from the uh, board president, superintendent, and uh, finally the board remarks. For myself, I just uh, want to say how pleased I was that the budget did pass uh, and welcome Preeti and Marie um, to, uh, to the, as new school board members uh, on July, at our July 7th meeting coming up. And again, uh, we're gonna miss uh, both uh, Carolyn and Inga and uh, very much miss uh, Nisa, who uh, I've really gotten to know over these uh, many years and uh, wish her well in her retirement. Uh, Kim, would you like to say something? Yes, uh, just a couple of things. Um, we're not letting Nisa go yet though. Uh, <laughs> in the midst of some very important work our architect, C.S. Arch, is uh, completing the building's condition survey. We will be meeting again with them this week, and we expect that, that building condition survey uh, will be ready for uh, Nisa to share uh, when she convenes the facilities and finance team. Um, and then um, we, will, we will be in business there. We have been slightly delayed due to COVID-19, but we are energized and um, we are moving forward uh, with, with um, all, due, all due diligence and we're very excited. So glad um, we, we still have some work for Nisa to do uh, during our transition. I want to compliment Pauling High School for the outstanding uh, celebration of our students last Thursday night at Four Brothers Drive-In. Compliments have been moving around the community. I think people had a lot of fun. I think the students enjoyed it. I know the families enjoyed it. We're hearing a lot of that. And none of this would have happened without uh, the flexibility and creativity of the Pauling High School staff led by Mrs. Callan. So she was the impresario of this event in many ways, and she was supported by an incredibly creative team of, of teachers. In addition, all of the celebrations of uh, the high school students have been undergirded by a great gift, and I mentioned it earlier, but perhaps not everyone was in um, our prior reception. Lori Spenz and Jane Haslam are two extraordinary photographers that we're fortunate to have in Pauling, and they donated their special services, which were featured in the film um, and um, in other facets of the celebration. So um, we are so lucky here in Pauling to have remarkable artists and to have them want to um, put their arms around our high school students and help celebrate them. So we look forward to our diploma ceremony this Friday but um, congratulations to, to Pauling High School. And then I would just echo Dr. Asher's remarks. I want to thank the community for its ongoing support of our schools and its participation um, in our trustee election and budget vote. So we appreciate that support and we intend to honor it. Thank you. My remarks, Dr. Asher. Thank you. Are there any uh, board members that would like to uh to say something at this point. Oh, Karen. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, there's so much to celebrate tonight. I really enjoyed seeing the highlights of the students and the retirees and the staff getting tenure. It's really uh, an honor to see all these wonderful people that have been involved in our district and that are going to be involved in the district going forward. I just wanted to add to all of the comments that we've heard so far of the, uh, the celebrations of all the arts, the students. Uh, I've been uh, clicking and watching and listening to some of the musical celebrations or uh, performances that have been made available to the community and parents, the band, the chorus, the art displays. And it's just wonderful, especially as we've all acknowledged the extraordinary circumstances that our students were under, how they still kept working, working at their instruments and their art and 
how amazing uh, what I've viewed and listened to the last few days really was. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge that, the, uh, the arts programs and the students and what they did. And um, just want to uh, also uh, thank my friend Inga for her service these last six years. We were there together when the Edible Garden was started in the elementary school almost 10 years ago, maybe more than 10 years ago, and really enjoyed the last two years being on the board with her. And I'm, I'm happy uh, to see her move on. And I know I'll we'll see her again. I'm, I'm not saying goodbye in any means, but look forward to seeing the work your children do in the school and that you continue to do in the community. So thanks. Thank you, Karen. Um, Thank you. I see uh, Ed's hand up. Yes, um, I want to go and uh, echo my uh, Fond farewell to Nisa and her hard work and dedication. And uh, I really appreciate her uh, specialized knowledge that uh, was head and shoulders above mine. And I appreciated her way of explaining uh, what would be for me a difficult subject so that I could understand it. So thank you very much and have a good uh, uh, retirement. I also want to uh, say goodbye to Inga, at least as a board member. Uh, I remember being, you uh, being there at the, uh, the revolution uh, in the uh, elementary school uh, playground uh, where we uh, <laughs> all felt uh, that there had to be a change um, in uh, the leadership of the school. And uh, the movement of that led to the successes that we see today. So uh, I appreciated you then and uh, I enjoyed your, your company on the school board, uh, good luck. Wish Carolyn uh, the best also. And I'd like to welcome uh, Preeti and Marie and looking forward to uh, working with them over the next couple of years. Okay. Deborah, you had your hand up. Thank you, Dr. Asher. Uh, I don't have a lot more to add the, to echo what my colleagues have said, but I have to say, so much uh, how I have enjoyed working on this board. Uh, I think we had a great team this past year saying goodbye to Inga uh, so that you can join the cheap seats on the other side <laughs> <laughs> starting in, uh, in July, as well as saying goodbye to Carolyn on the board. I've really enjoyed uh, working with her on the policy committee. I think we had a, a very good team there that people don't really get to see what goes on behind the scenes. And everybody brings their own special touch to those kinds of meetings. And it's been a pleasure to work with both of you. Nisa, I wish you all the best in the world. Um, as well as all the other retirees who I've, I've seen in the buildings as my daughter has gone through each of them and struck a relationship with many of the retirees. Um, good luck, happy, healthy, long retirements. And to the tenure recipients, thank you so much for your dedication. We look forward to working with you for years to come. And then to the top 10 students and all the students of the class of 2020, you're groundbreakers. You're doing what no one's done before in a situation that no one's ever had to deal with. And you rocked. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. I, I saw Harvey's physical hand go up. Would you like to talk? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What do I want to talk? Yes. Uh, First of all, um, 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 there aren't words enough to um, thank um, an individual who's leaving, um, Nisa Centenic, who I, as a member of the audit committee, have probably worked with closely more than anybody um, on the school board. Um, what I appreciate and, and, and how she would approach questions asked by me and some other board members, and especially the public, with an amount of grace that I find incredible. Um, God bless you. Um, you, you, the transparency and and um, and handling the questions that um, so at times could be a little bit aggressive. Um, I, I, I don't know where you get it, but um, 
I, I, I just hope that um, I, I'm sure your next life is going to be a wonderful one. Um, I see another face in the upper right hand corner, uh, Ms. Callan. Um, our district is blessed, is blessed with a Jedi master. That's why I, the only way I could describe Mrs. Callan, how she and her uh, assistants, her Jedi assistants, um, pulled this these um, celebrations off, turning lemons into lemonade is a miracle. If, if um, uh, um, you would have told this board and I assume most of the administration that the success that we would have had um, two or three months ago uh, ooh, around um, not knowing what was going on um, on the St. Patrick's Day, that's, that, was, that was the ignominious day that it started. Um, these seniors are going to remember 2020 just like I remember the moon landing. I hardly remember my high school graduation, to be honest with you. But they have turned what would have been an ordinary graduation that I have sat through as a board member who were half a dozen times into three celebrations. They had the caravan that went through the town, the buses and the, and the sheriffs and the waving. They had a movie all dedicated to them. I, 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 how many graduating classes in Pauling would have a movie with James Earl Jones dedicated to them? And then they're going to have what, what is, in essence, is a real graduation and get their diplomas next week. Incredible. Also, a thanks goes to um, 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 so, um, our town supervisor for the signs with pictures. I don't know how many graduating classes have their actual names and pictures on the village green. I, 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 right, this is a memorable um, graduation, and it, it worked out. Um, a little bit of luck, a lot of talent, and a lot of hard work. Thank you, Harvey. Wonderfully said. Inga Gabrino, uh, would you like to talk? Yes, please. So I want to thank all of you guys for a wonderful six years on the Board of Ed. Um, we have done a lot of really good work. Um, I'm really proud of where this district is. And I think that many of you know, I am Pauling's biggest cheerleader. Well, maybe, I don't know. There might be others, but I'm pretty big cheerleader Pauling. And I'm always really excited about everything that happens in the schools. And like Ed said, you know, I started eight years ago. Uh, I have to laugh, Helen. I have to thank Jen Chasen for that. That's where I started. Um, but then, you know, just starting to get our schools to where we are. And I'm so proud to have been part of that movement and part of um, the cooperative that has worked to do this. So thank each, I wanna thank each of you guys for all the work that we've put into this. I wanna thank all the teachers and um, staff at Pauling who have been amazing through all the six years. And the more I hear of what they do, they're phenomenal and the kids have raised the bar, I think, at this school also. And I'm just so very proud of everybody here. And thank you guys all for all of the work. And remember, you know, we all work together to do this. And you know where I live, so I'm still in. <laughs> Maybe Definitely. I'll get back to some gardening. That would be a good thing. I was walking around, I see some weeds. That might be my next job. <laughs> I definitely know where you live. <laughs> thank you, Inga. Oh, is there anything else from the board? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Helen, you have you're on mute. Mr. Asher, I, please forgive me. I just wanted to take a moment because I did want to thank when we came out with the movie, many people sent us emails and said, what was your in with James Earl Jones? Who knew him? How did you get him? And I wanted to let you all know and the public know we did not have an in. We had a concept that came from Brian Ostin about Star Wars. And then we had teachers, Julia Ronaldo, Steve Malone, who basically started emailing. And we basically put out a plea. And so I wanna give a, a, a personal and public thank you to Mr. James Earl Jones and his assistant, because we didn't, the fact that we sent a plea. We were the Pauling 
in Poland community, of which, of course, he was there. He's been here for 50 years. So out of the goodness of his heart and with his assistant probably sifting through, agreed to do this for us. So I just wanted to make sure not everybody would. We sent many emails out, but right away they came right back and said that he would be more than happy to do it for us. And I think we'll all agree it made it extra special. So again, want to thank our famous polling resident, Mr. James Earl Jones, for making it, putting the icing on the top of the cake. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're at uh, visitor comments. Uh, Karen, are there any uh, visitor comments having to do with agenda items only? No, there are not, Jeff. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll go to the agenda. Resolve to approve the following additions, deletions, changes, and order of the agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, Peggy, could you read the uh, the changes, please? You're muted. Okay. We only have one addition to the agenda. It is under financial. It is the uh, Ban Instruments Repair and Rental Award for a uh, um, RFP. Excellent. Um, all in favor of uh, that change, uh, say aye. Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? The agenda is changed. Resolved that the Board of Education approve all asterisk items as the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Deborah. Second? Second. Second. Inga, thank you. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any against? None. Any abstentions? None. Motion passes. Resolved resolve that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the following meeting, March, excuse me, May 26, 2020, the public hearing and business meeting, June 9th, 2020, the special board meeting, and June 16th, 2020, the canvas of 2020 to 2021 vote. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Ed. Second? Second. Thank you, Deborah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay, any abstentions? Motion passes. I believe we're down to new business. Kim, did you want to talk to any new business? You're, Kim, you're muted. Um, I only wanted to say that uh, the board has been very helpful and cooperative in planning, helping me to plan our summer retreat. And we're looking across um, ways that uh, the board board can work together effectively to build uh, uh, ongoing community support for our initiatives, um, legal updates, work around equity and anti-racism, and um, uh, just some of our, our general operating processes. So I thank the board for uh, always being willing to continue to learn and I look forward to working with our two new board members as well. So uh, we're, uh, we're in the throes of planning our summer learning together. And thank you for your participation. Thank you. Okay, we're at visitor comments again. This is about any, uh, any, Jeff. yes, okay. Harvey? Um, I, um, again, maybe this distance learning is something that I haven't learned. Um, um, I, I, we went through the consent agenda um, very quickly. Um, I'd ask Nisa, and she agreed to discuss under financials item 10 um, um, that um, um, well, that I approve of, but um, I think it needs some explanation. So if, if Nisa would be kind enough to explain um, item 10 on the um, financials on the consent agenda, well, what, what its purpose was and what, what the meaning of it is. I can do that. Um, item 10 on the consent agenda is the funding of reserves as of June 30th, 2020. 
And this is a process that we started several years ago under the guidance of our auditors to uh, pass a resolution in June that will allow the Board of Education to make um, some critical decisions in August before the tax levy is set. And that is to establish or fund reserves as needed once we close our books and the audit has been completed. Um, so this is a key financial uh, management technique that we have in place and I'm sure it will be continued with my successor. And, and the reason we couldn't do anything with funding reserves, um, Lisa, is that um, we have not received um, the, um, the audited financials for June 30th. So we do, do not know the full extent uh, of our, our position with um, our fund balance. Yes, and, and, um, and that decision can be made up until the time that we send out the warrants in, um, in August, in, in beginning of September. It needs to be made prior to the setting of the tax levy. Tax levy or warrant? I used to call them warrants. It's the warrant, yes. Oh, that's the technical. Um, Thank you. Okay. And, Thank you for that. And, and then, Kim, an, an item I brought up before, uh, I assume you will, um, um, it, our next meeting is, what is it, three weeks away, approximately? Two, two weeks. The seven two. Two weeks, it's only? Two weeks. Okay. July and, and, 7th. Excuse me? July, July 7th. 7th. Okay, two weeks. Okay, fine. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the um, agenda and the, um, um, and, and uh, on our um, professional development. And, and um, I, I assume you're going to contact the, the two uh, new board members um, as to what their preferences are. And um, we're going to, you know, because I, I would hope we're not going to have to make a decision on July the 7th, um, which, which would um, be something that might be just two weeks away. So um, I would hope that we're going to get the information and, and the consensus of the uh, new board members um, um, prior to our meeting on, um, on the 7th of July. Yes, my first work is actually to find out the flexibility of the presenters. Once I have the flexibility of the presenters, then I'll reach back out to all of all of the board members to set the date, time, and venue. Um, I have, um, um, but I, I really have to start with what's available in terms of our presenters. So that's where I am, and I'll be reaching out to the new board members along with everyone else. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Harvey. Uh, Karen, uh, are there any visitor comments about any uh, any item at all? Yes, Jeff, we do have a comment that was submitted to us tonight. So I'll go ahead and read that. Please read it. All right. This is from Kevin Gardner, 18 Tracy Road in Pauling. Hello, Pauling School Board. Thank you very much for your public service. My question is about the PCSD debt related to the middle school construction. According to the debt schedule sent to me by NISA about six months ago, we have two more school years before the middle school is paid off in full. For part one of that debt, our final payment is $737,300 in final year 2020 slash 21. The following year, 21 slash 22, Part two of that debt is completely paid off with a final payment of $486,875. This represents about $1.2 million of our current budget, about 3%. Can Pauling's taxpayers expect to see a 3% decrease in the operating budget of the Pauling Central School District as a result of this debt being satisfied over the next two years? Can we start to discuss this opportunity and communicate to the public the good news ahead. I'd like to, I think I can respond to Mr. Gardner's uh, question and Dr. Sensenig uh, may have additional items to add. So we have certainly throughout our stewardship of the school district finances have already begun to plan for when debt falls off the table as I know we've alerted Mr. Gardner and other citizens who are close um, attenders to district finance, that it is very important to ensure that we keep our tax levy as steady as possible. And of course our tax levy 
increases grow out of other um, expenditures, both the revenue and the expense side of the budget. So it's also valuable to keep both our expenditures as level as possible as well. Debt service is, of course, an expenditure that is related to capital investment in our schools. And it's important that we continue to invest in our schools. It has the virtue of keeping our tax levy as steady as we possibly can. And it also continues our investment in our school district. So when we talk about keeping our tax levy steady, we, we often act as though the primary beneficiary of that is the taxpayer. And of course the taxpayer does benefit um, when we manage our household budgets or our business budgets. It's important for us to have a general idea of what our expenses will be. And if they increase slightly as they did, for instance, this year, we don't want that to be a volatile change. So um, there is a benefit, of course, to the taxpayer. There's also a crucial benefit to our stewardship of the programs. Having a tax levy experience volatility uh, can be one of the most damaging and crushing results for a school district. So the tax levy controls the ability of the school to keep pace with its programs and with its staff. So any precipitous drop in a tax levy is crippling to the education for our students. So as we have said right along, we will work to keep these expenses as steady as we possibly can with careful management. Uh, perhaps, um, Mr. I don't know if Mr. Gardner is aware, but I know in general the community is and the board is that we went through a very comprehensive visioning process this fall which resulted in five critical findings, which we intend to enact in terms of the future of the school district. And the one that pertains most closely to facilities, um, I actually can read it, uh, read that finding. Facilities are designed and exist to enable students to develop talents and interests to excel in their goals. It's our vision in terms of facilities for the future falling schools. So we will work to keep our expenditures level. Um, I would anticipate we will have debt that will be part of the capital projects that will undoubtedly come out of our building condition survey. They will be things that we must do to preserve our buildings and our facilities. And they will also be those things that we need to do so that facilities are in fact designed to enable students to develop talents and interests to excel in their goals. So we are, uh, we are continuing to manage uh, the tax levy and expenditures as, uh, so that we can keep those um, costs and expenditures as steady as possible. Dr. Sensene, what did I leave out that uh, you could share with the public or with Mr. Gardner? What I'd like to do is just to tie my comments regarding funding of the reserves that occurs in um, August along with all of the comments that Ms. Fontana has mentioned. This is a total financial picture of the school district and we need to um, consciously and conscientiously manage all of these components. So I think that's where we need to head. Thank you both. Uh, at this point, uh, we're ready to adjourn. Um, resolve that the Board of Education adjourn this meeting. The time is now 7.47. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion from Harvey and second I'll by second. Karen. Karen is seconding. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? None are against. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Good you. night. Good night.